Hi class and welcome to our second day on section 7.3. We're continuing to solve equations using quadratic techniques. So with this one here, there are certain tricks that I tell you when you try to solve an equation. If you see two terms, you try to do the difference of two squares, or maybe it's the sum or difference of cubes. If you see three terms, you should try to factor it. If you see four terms, what initially should come to your brain is maybe you could factor by grouping. So what that means is can you take something out of here and can you take something out of here? Let's try that. We could take out an x squared in the first two terms and then we're left with an x and a negative 3. In the second two terms I could take out a positive 7 and then I'm left with an x minus 3. That equals 0. Well now I have two terms, one right here and one right here and they both have the quantity x minus 3 in it. So I can now factor that out in front. So I'm taking out a GCF kind of, and the GCF is x minus 3. So x minus 3 comes out in front, and then what is left? An x squared is left, and a positive 7 is left. So that's what goes here. x squared plus 7. That equals 0. So now you've successfully factored it. If you wanted to, you could FOIL this right here and you'd get right back to our original problem again if you want to check your work. So now that we have successfully factored it by grouping, we're now going to set these factors equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0 and x squared plus 7 equals 0. Finishing up, x equals 3, that's one of our roots, and then the other one, x squared equals a negative 7, square root both sides, so x equals both the plus and the minus i times the square root of 7. Our degree on this one was 3. It's an x cubed term, so you have to get three answers, and there they are, x equals 3, and x equals plus or minus i square root 7. Why don't you guys try the next one? Um, very similar situation. Pause the video, try this one on your own. Hopefully, you took out an x squared in the first two terms, and you're left with a x squared times the quantity x minus 3, and then if you take out a negative 4 in the second term, you're left with, once again, an x minus 3. And that equals 0. So now they both have an x minus 3 term in them. Let's factor that out in front. x minus 3. And then we have the x squared and the negative 4 from the other two terms. So that equals 0. Let's set both of our factors equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. And x squared minus 4 equals 0. That means that x equals the positive 3, and x squared equals 4. Square root both sides, x equals plus and minus 2. There is your three answers for this one, x equals 3, and x equals plus and minus 2. All right, on to a whole new animal. So now we have fractional exponents. So we're going to solve these again by using quadratic techniques. So we see three terms. Oftentimes, when we see three terms, the way we solve is by factoring. So the rest of our notes today will be factoring. Okay. Now, if we were to see something like this class, x squared minus 6x plus 5, wouldn't you factor this down into x and x, and then this 5 would make a minus 5 and a minus 1, that would get you the negative 6. So that's how we would factor this one. So in a similar situation, we're going to do the same thing with this term. But now instead of having x multiplied by x to give us x squared, we need to have x times x to give us x to the two-thirds. And to be honest with you, when we do that, it's always going to be what this middle term is. Because x raised to the one-third times x raised to the one-third, when you multiply, you add exponents, and you get x raised to the two-thirds. So now when we have these fractional exponents, we're still going to have the first times the first to give us x to the two-thirds, and this exponent in the binomials is always, always, always going to be the exponent that is in the middle term of our trinomial. Okay? So it always has that relationship. Okay, knowing that, we're going to factor this accordingly. So we have x raised to the one-third times x raised to the one-third, and then our c term, our constant term, that 5, that doesn't change. We still want to think of factors of 5 that when you add them up, they give us that middle term of a negative 6. So 
that's how we factor this one. You could always foil this down, foil it back, and you get right back to here again. Now that we have successfully factored it, let's now solve. So x raised to the one-third minus 5 equals 0, and x raised to the one-third minus 1 equals 0. Continuing, we're going to get x raised to the one-third by itself. That equals 5. And let's get x raised to the one-third by itself to equal 1. All right. Now on this step, when I take something raised to the one-third power, if I now cube both sides, x raised to the one-third cube with a power raised to a power, you'd multiply these exponents, and one-third times three is x raised to the first. So that's my goal. I want to get x to the first, or x by itself. So I successfully do that when I raise it to the third power. If I do that to the left side, i got to do that to the right side. So 5 cubed. 5 times 5 times 5. x equals 125. There is one of our answers. The other answer, if I cube this, I would get x. So I have to cube this. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. We have two answers for this one. x equals 125 and x equals 1. So just to let you know, you can't use that trick on, you know, whatever your degree is, you're going to get that many zeros. That doesn't work for fractional exponents. We're not going to get two-thirds of an answer. On this one, we get two answers. One thing that's kind of nice, though, is you can always check your work. You can put 125 back in here for x. 125 raised to the two-thirds minus 6 times 125 raised to the one-third plus 5. You're going to get 0 equals 0. So you can always check your work on these ones if you'd like to. All right, let's try not problem number four. Let's get better at this. It's going to take some practice, but the more times we do it, the better we're going to get. So instead of saying x times x to give us x squared, it's going to be x raised to the one-half times x raised to the one-half to get us x raised to the first power. So remember, your first terms in the binomial always have the fractional exponent of this. Notice how one-half, one-half, and one-half. They're always going to be the same. Okay, Okay. so we have x raised to the 1 half times x raised to the 1 half, and then factors of 10 that get us 3 are a negative 5 and a positive 2. So x raised to the 1 half plus 2, and x raised to the 1 half minus 5. So these are going to be our factors. Let's now set them equal to 0. x plus a half plus 2 equals 0, and x raised to the 1 half minus 5 equals 0. So we have this now, x raised to the 1 half equals a negative 2, and x raised to the 1 half equals a positive 5. Solving, if I want to get rid of the 1 half, if I square it, a power raised to a power, 1 half times 2 is just 1, so I get x to the first. If I do that to the left side, i got to do that to the right side. A negative 2 squared is a positive 4. Class, do you remember the term from... Advanced algebra A called an extraneous solution. Extraneous means you do everything algebraically correct, but you still get an answer that does not satisfy the equation. What happened here, class, is if I ever square a negative number, it turns positive, this becomes extraneous. It does not work. If you were to check it, if you put 4 back in for x, it would not work. So just to let you know that, whenever you square a negative number, don't say that's one of your answers. That's an extraneous solution. So you've got to be very aware of that, because I'll count that wrong on your test if you say x equals 4 and don't put extraneous there. So if ever you square a negative number, it's extraneous. Square this one, and we get x equals 5 squared. x equals 25 is our only answer for this one. Okay? Let's practice another one in problem number 5. When we factor, we want to get a 0 to one side, so let's first subtract this 7, and let's change this into a fractional exponent. The square root of x to the first is the same thing as x raised to the 1 half. Remember how this becomes the numerator and this becomes the denominator? So let's change it. x minus 6x raised to the 1 half minus 7 equals 0. Now we're more familiar with this one. We're now going to form two different parentheses. It's going to be x raised to the 1 half times x raised to the 1 half. And then factors of a negative 7 to get us a negative 6 would be a negative 7. 
and a positive 1. Now that we have successfully factored it, let's now set these equal to 0. So x raised to the 1 half minus 7 equals 0. x raised to the 1 half plus 1 equals 0. Finishing up, x raised to the 1 half equals a positive 7. And x raised to the 1 half equals a negative 1. Square both sides to get rid of the 1 half. And you would get x equals 49. Whoopsie x equals 49. There's one of your answers. The other answer is x equals, if you square negative 1, you'd get a positive 1. However, what happens when you square a negative number? It becomes extraneous. It's a fun word, isn't it? Extraneous solution. So that one does not work. Our only answer is x equals 49. You guys pause the video. Try number 6 on your own. After you tried number 6 on your own, you found that when you factor this, this is the same thing as x raised to the 1 half. So you got x raised to the 1 half times x raised to the 1 half and a positive 3 and a positive 3. Now that you got that, you found that x raised to the 1 half equals a negative 3 and x raised to the 1 half equals a negative 3. Same thing. So now to get rid of the 1 half, you square both sides and what happens when you square a negative number, even though you get x equals 9, it is extraneous. Hopefully you found that. When you square both sides of this one, the binomials were the same, so the roots are going to be the same. x equals 9, it is extraneous. So what the world just happened? This one is no solution. There is not a single number that exists in the inf infinite number of numbers that there are that would make this sentence true. Nothing, nothing, nothing could I put in for x to make the left side equal the right side. Last one, problem number seven. It looks intimidating, but you do it the exact same way we did all of these ones. We're going to get two different binomials, equal to zero. It's going to be x raised to the three halves and x raised to the three halves because that's going to get us x raised to the 6 halves when you take the first times the first, which you get right back to x cubed again. So we're good there. x raised to the 3 halves times x raised to the 3 halves. Subtract 8 and subtract 1, because a negative 8 times a negative 1 still gets you a positive 8. And then when you subtract them, a negative 8 and a negative 1 make a negative 9. So we have successfully factored the, t the binomials. Now... Let's set x raised to the 3 halves minus 8 equaling 0, and x raised to the 3 halves minus 1 equals 0. Now that we have this, we could say x raised to the 3 halves equals a positive 8, and x raised to the 3 halves equals a positive 1. Class, remember how in chapter 5, how we were able to change this into radical form? It was the square root of x cubed. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's erase that. Let's get x all by itself first. And the way we do that is we multiply by the reciprocal. Because 2 thirds times 3 halves is 6 sixths, which just gets us 1. So we get x to the first. We get x all by itself. If we do that to the left side, we've got to do that to the right side. So we raise 8 to the 2 thirds. And we get 8 raised to the 2 thirds. Now, remember from chapter 5, how we can change this into the third root of 8 squared. And the third root of 8 is 2, so it's 2 squared. The third root of 8 is 2, and then the exponent comes out with it. So it's 2 squared. We get the answer of x equals 4. Let's try that again here for the other root. So we're going to raise both sides to the 2 thirds power. And so we get x equals 1 raised to the 2 thirds, which is the same thing as saying the third root of 1 squared. And the third root of 1 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So x equals 1 is our other root. So x equals 4 and x equals 1. These are slightly trickier. Nothing that we can't handle. Let me know if you have any questions when you get to class tomorrow on these ones.